Hey there! Today I'd like to take a moment and share with you a memorizing formula that I developed over the years through teaching and performing. I think this formula can be relevant to anyone who's memorizing anything, but of course I've been using it with my violin and cello students. I developed this formula while teaching and learning so much from how my students responded, but also with sometimes wanting to do a small amount of practice to practice something that was really difficult and I wanted to break it into small bite-sized chunks. Sometimes I call these skinny practices when we do something really complicated over and over so we can really polish and get something done very quickly. On a string instrument, it's very important that we are able to memorize things in order to connect our physical body to the sounds that we're looking for. We have no frets or buttons. Once something's memorized, it becomes part of us and then we can get ourselves into the sound world rather than in the notation world. The notation world is really interpreting all of these symbols and what is the composer asking of us. When we get into the sound world, it becomes something that we can say and we can express the story of the composer's intention. The formula is what I call the 4-4-4 formula. Music is organized into phrases. That just means a musical sentence. At the end of a musical phrase, it can feel like a question mark, a comma, a period, lots of different options of how a musical phrase can end, but music will definitely be organized into these phrases. This gives us a point in which we can break apart a long piece of music and make it into smaller chunks. Often, not always, but often, musical phrases will be grouped into eight bars or eight measures. A bar or a measure is the music in between the two lines. So how I teach this memorizing formula is that we're going to start with a group of four bars or four measures. This will often be half of the sentence or half of the phrase. We're gonna play that four bars with the music perfectly four times. I'm saying perfectly because we need to make sure that we have all the right notes and all the right articulations and all the right rhythms. So those three things need to be understood completely before we can begin memorizing it. Now that we've performed the passage four times with the notation, we're gonna try to perform it four times without the notation. Usually that first time is gonna be a little wobbly, but after four attempts, we should be able to have it completely memorized. If we're not able to get it completely memorized, then we can go back and do another four repetitions with the notes, or we need to make that chunk a little smaller. In complex music, we definitely need to make it a smaller chunk. Once you've got that first four bars in, four repetitions with the music and four repetitions without the music, you can add four more bars. Let's talk about goal setting. So usually when I'm getting ready to do one of these skinny practices or maybe even a larger practice, I'm going to make a goal for myself. How many bars do I wanna to memorize today? If it's a shorter practice, I would go with just memorizing those four bars. If it's a longer practice, maybe I'll say something like eight bars, 16 bars, or even half a page as my goal, but always going back to these small chunks to build up to that 16 bars or half a page. The goal here is measurable progress. So every practice you're able to accomplish your goal. So you're going to memorize at least four bars each practice and you can see how that will fuel your excitement and your want to practice more and more. Common problems and solutions. For more complicated music or more complicated works, I'm going to split my memorizing formula into two bars or even one bar, and in super complicated stuff, sometimes just two notes. If you're not able to accomplish the passage after four or even eight repetitions, we probably have too large of a chunk. Secondly, if we're not able to accomplish it, perhaps we have some missing information. There's something that's not fully understood. So we need to dissect and figure out what is not fully understood. Is it a musicianship problem? So do we not fully understand the pitches or the rhythms or the relationship they have to each other? Is it a notation misunderstanding? Do we not fully understand what the composer is asking of us? Or is it a technical problem? We don't understand the physical demands and how it should feel, look, or be executed. Here is where a teacher can help you and give you more information or find out what's missing in your understanding. I hope this has been helpful for you today and please let me know in the comments if there's any way I can be of service to you. I know you hear this all the time, but if you find this useful, please subscribe, like, and share 
so that somebody else may be able to find it. Happy practicing.